On the morning of June 16th, 1974, a man took his sons out into a swampy area of Singer Island on the eastern coast of Florida to look for driftwood. Instead, the family found the skeletal remains of a young woman amongst the mangroves. Wire had been used to tie her to a tree. The remains were entirely skeletonized, with scraps of clothing scattered around them. With only bones to go on, it was difficult for authorities to come up with a description of the young woman the remains belonged to, much less make an identification. They attempted to use dental records to identify her without success. They estimated that the young woman was between 13 and 19 years old, and that she had weighed between 83 and 133 pounds, and been somewhere between 4 feet 11 inches tall and 5 feet 2 inches tall. A cause of death could not be conclusively determined, and it was initially believed that she had died between 8 weeks and 8 months before her remains were located. Unable to identify the Jane Doe and notify her family, Authorities had no choice but to bury her remains. The Jane Doe remained unidentified for decades, but investigators were eventually able to use new technology to attempt to determine who she was. Her remains were exhumed in April of 2014 in hopes of obtaining a sample of her DNA. Her DNA profile was successfully developed in 2015. There were no matches to it in any database, but investigators continued to find other uses for the profile. They were able to use the profile to exclude several missing women as potential matches. The Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office released a new facial reconstruction, showing what their Jane Doe may have looked like while alive in 2019, but no one called in reporting that they recognized her. In December 2021, the remains were sent to Othram, a Texas-based laboratory, to develop a DNA profile so as to use genetic genealogy in the case. In March of 2022, genealogists presented the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office with several potential leads to follow up on. On June 2, 2022, the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office announced that the Singer Island Jane Doe had finally been identified. Her name was Susan Gale Poole. Susan was born on February 12, 1957. At the end of 1972, when she was 15 years old, she had dropped out of high school and was splitting her time living with her family in a trailer park near Fort Lauderdale and with a friend who had an apartment nearby. Susan's family reported her missing just before Christmas of 1972. When they first could not contact Susan, they weren't sure if she had left town on her own accord or if something had happened to her. She was known to hitchhike and had left once before. However, her clothing and belongings all remained at her friend's apartment, and Susan's sister Patty has stated that she knew something was wrong as soon as she saw Susan's purse left behind on the friend's couch. In 2022, nearly 50 years after Susan disappeared, her mother was still alive and now in her 90s. She provided the DNA sample that confirmed that the remains found on Singer Island belonged to her daughter. Police believe that Susan may have been a victim of Gerard John Schaefer, a suspected serial killer and a former Martin County Sheriff's deputy. Prior to joining the Sheriff's Office, Schaefer had been a police officer with the Wilton Manors Police Department and had been fired for allegedly violating the Civil Service Code. He was accused of pulling over female motorists for traffic violations so he could get their basic information and then using police resources to obtain further personal information about them and contacting them to ask them out on dates. In July of 1972, 18-year-old Nancy Trotter and 17-year-old Paula Sue Wells were vacationing in Florida. While they were hitchhiking near the beach, they encountered a Martin County Sheriff's deputy, Gerard Schaefer. He told them that hitchhiking was illegal in the area, which was a lie. After radioing in to report that he would be transporting the two teenagers, he had them get into his vehicle and drove them to where they were staying in Stewart. He offered to give them a ride to Jensen Beach the following day because it was in his patrol area. The next day, he met them at the agreed-upon meeting spot in civilian clothes and driving his own car. Instead of driving Nancy and Sue to the beach, he drove them to an old shed on Hutchinson Island 
where he handcuffed, bound, and gagged both of the young women. At this time, neither of them attempted to escape, as Schaefer threatened to kill the girl left behind if one of them tried to run. He further threatened to rape them, hold them for ransom, and sell them into slavery. Schaefer then tied Nancy and Sue to separate trees, not in view of each other, and put nooses around each of their necks. They had to balance on the exposed roots of the tree so as to not fall and be hanged. Schaefer believed this was enough to keep the young woman secure and left them there. While he was gone, both girls were able to chew away at the ropes to give them enough slack to escape their nooses without injury. Nancy hid for half an hour, fearing Schaefer was still in the area. She eventually decided to run and fought her way through thick vegetation, fearing Schaefer would find her if she stayed on a path. When the trees became too thick for her to get through, she decided to swim in the nearby Indian River because she knew it would eventually take her to a road. Still handcuffed, she was able to swim using just her legs. When she finally made it to the road, she walked out of the water and began calling out to passing cars. The first car to stop was driven by Martin County Sheriff Robert Crowder. He had been out looking for Nancy because Sue had been found 45 minutes earlier and told authorities that her friend was in trouble. Sue had managed to get to a road after getting herself free and a truck driver had stopped to help her. Sheriff Crowder was Schaefer's boss. After Schaefer realized the girls had escaped, he called the sheriff and told him, I've done something foolish. You're going to be mad at me. Schaefer claimed that he had gotten carried away trying to teach the two young women a lesson about the dangers of hitchhiking. The sheriff did not believe him, and neither did the courts. Schaefer was arrested and charged with aggravated assault and false imprisonment. Schaefer was released on $15,000 bail. He was still free on September 27, 1972, the last day 17-year-old Susan Place and 16-year-old Georgia Jessup were seen alive. The two teenagers had become friends at Fort Lauderdale's Adult Education Center, where they were both students. Around 8.30 p.m. on the evening of the 27th, the two left Susan's home in Oakland Park, near Fort Lauderdale, with an older man to go play guitar at a nearby beach. Susan told her mother, Lucille, that her friend's name was Jerry Shepard. Lucille was suspicious of an older man spending time with two teenage girls, so she took note of his car, a blue-green Datsun, and wrote down his license plate number when he picked up the girls. The car was registered to Schaefer. Lucille would also later identify Schaefer as the man who the girls left with that day from a photographic lineup. George's father, who had met the man known as Jerry Shepard, also identified him as Schaefer. Susan and George's remains were found on April 1st, 1973. A father and son were out searching for discarded aluminum cans on Hutchinson Island when they came across the remains. Susan had been shot in the jaw, and according to detectives, evidence indicated that both girls had been tied to a tree and butchered. The location where they were found was only six miles away from where Schaefer had taken Nancy and Sue. While the two girls had gone missing at the end of September, investigators did not trace the license plate number provided by Lucille Place until the end of March, just a week before the remains were found. By this time, Schaefer was serving his six-month sentence for the one charge of assault he pled guilty to over the attack on Nancy and Sue. He was questioned about the disappearance, but denied knowing Georgia or Susan. When their remains were located just a few days later, he became the prime suspect in their murders. Schaefer was indicted on May 18, 1973, and held without bond. He was convicted of two counts of first-degree murder that October. Schaefer was convicted during the period of time when the death penalty could not be imposed due to a Supreme Court ruling. The presiding judge later stated that he would have sentenced Schaefer to death had he been legally allowed to. Instead, Schaefer received two life sentences, with the possibility of parole in 2018, when he would have been 72. Schaefer maintained his innocence in the murders, claiming he was set up by one of his defense attorneys, who did go on to marry one of Schaefer's ex-wives. 
He was also critical of prosecutors using his creative writing as evidence in the case. They claimed that Schaefer's stories were thinly veiled accounts of actual crimes he committed. Schaefer claimed they were just art. However, after his high school girlfriend published a collection of these stories he had written, he did imply in a letter sent from prison that the stories were in fact confessions. Schaefer was found stabbed to death in his cell at the Florida State Prison on December 3, 1995. He had 43 stab wounds as well as defensive wounds on his hands and arms. His eyes had been stabbed badly enough to leave one of them completely destroyed, and he had six broken ribs. Prison officials identified his killer as Vincent Rivera, who was serving a life sentence for two murders he committed in February of 1990. Rivera's reported motive was his displeasure at Schaefer taking two cups of hot water from the water fountain rather than just one a few days before he was killed. Georgia Jessup's mother, Shirley, told reporters that she wanted to send Schaefer's killer a present, and that while she was always confident that her daughter's murderer would get what was coming to him, she wished it had happened sooner. While Schaefer was only ever convicted of two murders, he is considered a suspect in as many as 30 murders, some dating back to 1969. According to Circuit Judge C.P. Trowbridge, who presided over Schaefer's double murder trial, Evidence ties him to crimes across the country. When police searched Schaefer's mother's home in Fort Lauderdale after Susan Place and Georgia Jessup's remains were found, they found items including jewelry, identification documents, a diary, and gold teeth belonging to at least five missing or murdered young women. The remains of other young women known to hitchhike in the area have also been found in similar circumstances as Schaefer's known victims. However, authorities never felt they had enough conclusive evidence to charge Schaefer with any more murders. Robert Stone, who prosecuted Schaefer for the murders of Susan Place and Georgia Jessup, described him as the most sexually deviant person I had ever seen. He made Ted Bundy look like a Boy Scout. Bill Haggerty, who interviewed Schaefer for the Violent Crime Apprehension Program during his tenure as an FBI agent, later stated that out of all the serial killers from across the country he interviewed during his time with the FBI, Schaefer was easily in the top five of the sickest individuals he talked with. According to Schaefer's statements to psychiatrists while he was incarcerated, he began associating pain and sex around the age of 12. He would tie himself to trees and would become sexually excited from hurting himself. Soon, that excitement was transferred to the idea of hurting women. His short-lived first marriage ended when his first wife filed for divorce, citing extreme cruelty. As with the numerous other potential victims of Schaefer, investigators have no concrete physical evidence connecting him to Susan Poole's murder. They believe he may be responsible for her murder purely based on circumstances. Susan was known to hitchhike, and Schaefer was known to pick up hitchhikers. Susan's remains were found tied to a tree, as were Schaefer's two known victims. Furthermore, while Schaefer was sentenced in the assault case involving Nancy Trotter and Sue Wells on December 22, 1972, the judge allowed him to delay the start of his sentence until after the holidays, meaning he was not in custody when Susan disappeared. The Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office is still searching for further evidence to see if Schaefer can be tied conclusively to Susan's murder. They are hoping that friends of Susan's from around the time of her murder may be able to help them connect Susan and Schaefer. In a Facebook post, they announced that they are hoping to locate and interview three of Susan's friends, Julie Hunt, Michelle Williamson, and Greg Anderson. They are asking that these three individuals contact Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office Detective Bill Springer. According to Detective Springer, Susan's mother and siblings were glad to know what became of her after so long, but he hopes to be able to give them further closure by being able to definitively identify her killer. <laughs>